Good morning and welcome to Berkeley United Methodist Church, where our mission statement is to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I'm Vicki. I'm the music director and associate pastor here at Berkeley. Rusty is taking, our, our, our lead pastor, is taking a very well-deserved week off this week off. And so today I will bring you the message in our service. I uh, would like to invite you, before I do some general announcements, to turn to a neighbor or text them or give them a call or send them an email, however you communicate with your friends and pass the peace of Christ to them, saying to them, the peace of Christ be with you and they should respond and also with you. And so we begin by saying to you, may the peace of Christ be with you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. I don't have very much in the way of announcements this morning, except to tell you that it is still Christmas. Christmas has several days. It begins on Christmas Eve and it ends on January 6th, Epiphany. So we are still in the midst of Christmas tide. So I encourage you to continue singing carols, leave your decorations up, enjoy your tree, give more gifts if you feel like you want to do that. Some people do that on the 6th rather than the Christmas Eve. That's a tradition around the world. So remember that we are still in the midst of Christmas tide. Since Rusty is out this week and I will be starting a vacation starting tomorrow there we will have the um, how do I want to say this the Berkeley sent out on a buzz this morning through the email uh, Pastor Miguel's contact information so that you can contact him if there is any pastoral need that arises today if something arises today you can call me that was also on the buzz and then starting tomorrow up till January 2nd you will call Miguel that's a lot of information. Just read that buzz email or contact me if you don't know quite who's the person to get a hold of when and we'll be glad to get that information to you. Uh, Tyler at our um, drive-in service this morning had one more announcement to give to us and it was it was done in jest and, and great fun but I love it so I'm going to give it and that was don't forget to set your clocks ahead to 2021 this year so <laughs> the new year is coming this week. And with that, and with the midst of, of Christmas celebrations, anticipating the arrival of the calendar new year, we invite you during the prelude to enter into a time where you uh, prepare your hearts and minds to worship God today. Good morning. Please join with me as we read responsibly the call to worship. God, you are bringing a brand new year and allowing the old one to leave. God, you're allowing things to pass away, calling your children home 
and breathing new life into a new year. God, you bring people together and pull them apart. You reach out of this world and into the cosmos on our behalf. God, where hope and fear meet at the center of your new year and our celebration remembering Christ's birth, we find new life in you. We don't always know when you're coming, how you're coming, what you're going to do when you come. However, we rejoice knowing that you will indeed come on time. You control time, so your timing is the best. You're an on-time God. Yes, you are. God of joy and celebration, God of love and mercy, God of peace and righteousness, we sing aloud and dance with the angels, the ruler of all worlds, the shepherd of creation. Jesus Christ has entered our world. Our Savior Christ has come into the world, not in power, not in might, but in the tenderness of love. He comes as the promise of life hidden in a mother's womb. In this season of God with us, we celebrate with the angels. We are graced by the wonder of God's presence, and we are filled with the tenderness of Christ's love.
Our first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9. I will be reading verses 2 through 4 and 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince, of peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Before we begin the sermon, I would like to talk to you for just a minute about a couple of things in it. The uh, Those of you who are here on Christmas Eve, you may have noticed that a few of our extended members of the church and the choir came back to be guests to sing for our Christmas services. Karen Walters had a really beautiful thing to say about this. She said it was like like when family all comes home for Christmas. I hope, that, I hope that you were blessed by those. I hope that you are blessed today as you see a little bit more of our extended choir family come back to celebrate with us during this Christmas tide season. But we're going to begin this sermon, what, I, which, what I'm calling for unto us, a sermon of sorts with a video. And so here we go. At the beginning of our scripture is everyday living. And, well, there has to be some expectation if we, the reader, the audience, the ones receiving what is about to happen, don't begin to expect, then what would be the purpose in even mentioning it? I mean, who cares about shepherds living not necessarily sleeping in a field and tending their flocks unless someone brings it up. It seems a story is beginning. And then an angel appears and light begins to glow. Not just any light, the light of the glory of God, glowing, radiating, making everything luminous and bright in every space and on every surface around the shepherds. I would probably have been scared too. What in the world is going on? And then a voice, each phrase getting a little higher and joyous with good news. Okay, well, that wasn't exactly what the angel said, but there was the mention of a savior, and then the angel described a child in a manger wrapped in cloths 
And couldn't our hearts, I mean, I mean, the shepherd's hearts, just not even for a moment echo back the promise? Might they have joined the initial proclamation, sending their voice back even as the host of heaven joined the angel with a flourish of praise? And then, in a rush, wouldn't we all begin to sing the news to everyone and go see for ourselves? Wait a minute. Isaiah said something about this. Do you remember? Is this that child? The one with all the names? You remember them, right? There was something about the government, but then... names and look there's the child what a celebration Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. What a wonderful moment. And all of that in a little newborn baby. The absolute being of God, our salvation, and the Spirit all brought to bear on and in humanity in one glorious birth event so many years ago. What a celebration indeed. And today, we remember and prolong the millennium-long celebration of that moment. We observe and proclaim in this holy space of time between Christmas Eve and Epiphany. This Christmas tide that begins with Joseph and Mary bringing life, God's life, into the world and the time when representatives of the rulers of the earth come to visit and acknowledge God with us, Emmanuel, with their gifts. This is also the magnificent and solemn sacred space where we remember that the first persons who heard the good news of the Messiah were ordinary people going about their work like us. And so we sang this morning, love has come a light in the darkness for us, for us. We who live in the dawn of love's light, seeing he has risen in our hearts, just as Ezekiel proclaimed. When Ezekiel said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This new life, this heart of flesh is Jesus who came so long ago. This is the birth we remember from ancient times, the birth that yet resounds into our very lives and will continue through all time. God comes to be with us. This is our joy.
For unto us the angel, the shepherds, and all people, especially those who walk in darkness, was born Jesus. And so we sing, God with us is now residing. Emmanuel, God with us, the one who lives in all the world and all of creation, living also within our own being. How do we even fathom the idea that God came and still comes to dwell within us in those new hearts that Ezekiel says we will have, but which are fickle, frail, faulty human hearts that turn away again and again. Is this the joy that propelled the host of heaven to enter into the angel's song? Did this angel and that host perceive that humans would know and be known by God in a new and indwelling way despite our hearts being the way they can be? The very wonder that we think when we, when we think about that amazing event of God coming to us is the same momentous question that has been wondered about throughout time. Augustine wrote about it a long time ago, mostly in parallel statements when he said, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord by whom all things were made and who was made flesh by the work of his hands who is the manifester of his father, the creator of his mother, and the son of God, born of a father without a mother, and the son of man, born of a mother without a father. The great day of the angels, small in the day of men. The word as God existing before all time, and the word as flesh existing only for an allotted time. The creator of the sun, created under the light of the sun, ordering all ages from the bosom of his father, from the womb of his mother, consecrating this day, remaining there, yet proceeding hither or here. Maker of heaven and earth brought forth on this earth, overshadowed by the heavens, unspeakably wise, wisely speechless, filling the whole world, yet lying in a manger, guiding the stars and a nursling at the breast, insignificant in the form of the man and so great in the form of God that his greatness was not lessened by his insignificance, nor was his smallness crushed by his might. Wow. <laughs> I wonder if we know that when we sing, Hail the Incarnate Deity, we both acknowledge this unfathomable, almighty God as Christ, fully divine and fully human, as well as the Incarnate Deity, which is not only placed in us, but is pleased with us in flesh to dwell. We can be assured that, August, that, as Augustine wrote, Emmanuel, who comes to dwell with us, is also 
the remaining God, the one who remains with us. God comes to us. God comes to dwell with us. God comes to dwell within us. For unto us, whose hearts are hard and lives are replete with absence, comes the child Jesus. And so we sing, Jesus, our Emmanuel. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, who mildly lays his glory by. For a moment, let us take time to remember that, that in the awe of God with us and the joy of our rejoicing, God chose to set aside immortality so that God and sinners, us, would be reconciled. It is the miracle that the writer of the Gospel of John lovingly and beautifully wrote when he said, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. It is also the word, the child, who was and is the one whom the letter to Colossae describes, saying he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, as in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. How many of us have wondered at the birth of a child, whether our own or another. Certainly parents remember the moment of, okay, I'm not sure what we're doing, but here we go. <laughs> that first day and that first night are so memorable when the realization comes that this small person has now been placed in the world to be cared for by and live alongside us. For those of us who are not parents, it may be remembering our care for an infant animal or a fledgling plant or even babysitting a small child for the first time and marveling at the fragility and miracle of life. This was also God. Come as Christ, fragile miracle of life in a newborn child. Meant to be with us, God whom we glorify as child and creator. It is the child that Mary cradled, and it is the child that Mary pondered in her heart when the shepherds came to visit.
God comes to us. God comes to dwell with us. God comes to dwell within us. And God comes as a child to be in loving relationship with us. For unto us who know, the, who know not the mystery of life and yet tend to it as best as we can comes the infant Jesus. And so we sing, what child is this? Haste and bring him laud. The Babe, the Son of Mary. On our altar every Sunday are two candles. These are ancient symbols of this child that Mary brought into the world, of Jesus the teacher, of Jesus our Savior, who was and is, continue to be fully human and fully divine. That is why we have two candles to indicate the two natures intertwined and unmistakably cannot be pulled apart, Jesus. But that's not all Jesus did when Jesus came. He was not just born. Jesus came also as Savior. C.S. Lewis wrote, in the Christian story, God descends to reascend. He comes down, down from the heights of absolute being into time and space, down into humanity, down further still, down to the very roots and seabed of the nature he has created. But he goes down to come up again and bring the whole ruined world up with him. The one who is the absolute being, the infant, Jesus, Savior, who is wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, comes to mend our relationship with God. Not only does Christ come as a child, not only does Christ come to dwell in us, not only does Christ remain with us, but Jesus Christ was born for this, to grow and redeem each part of our human state of being to God's own self. It is he who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation by whom all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, that makes the way for every one of us to enter into a renewed life with God, both now and for eternity. God comes to be with us. God comes to dwell with us. God comes to dwell within us. God comes as a child to be in loving relationship with us. And God comes to redeem us. For unto us, the people who walk in the darkness of this world, guided by the radiance of Christ, comes the Savior, the Messiah. And so we sing, he hath opened heaven's door and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ is born today. Oh. 
Christ was born for this. God comes to us. God dwells with us. God dwells within us. God comes as a child to be in loving relationship with us. God redeems us and God brings us to eternal life. Beginning with creation, coming into view through the birth of Jesus, saving us through his death and sending the spirit, God points us toward the kingdom. God chooses to come and God chooses to stay with us. Will we choose to stay with God? Will we, through the ever-circling years of remembering Jesus' birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension, choose Christ always? Will we follow the words of John Wesley when he says, in using all means, seek God alone? In and through every outward thing, look only to the power of his spirit and the merits of his son. Beware you do not get stuck in the work itself. If you do, it is all lost labor. Nothing short of God can satisfy your soul. Therefore, fix on him in all, through all, and above all. Last week, Rusty encouraged us to fix on Christ. He asked us to spend time in adoring Christ, to dwell with the words, O come, let us adore him in our very hearts and being. Today, I encourage every one of us to recommit to choosing Christ every day. It's a little easier during Christmas tide and Easter tide, which comes later on, when everything's kind of bright and joyful and feels really filled with hope. It's a little harder during Advent and Lent when we are wait and we're fixing our minds on expectation and repentance and turning back to Christ. But perhaps the most difficult time to choose Christ is in those shepherd on the hill side days. Shepherd on the hillside days, when we are going about our work, step by step, day by day. But that's when scripture shows the angel announcing the best news of all time. It comes when we least expect it. While we are following the example of the saints before us, embodying grace and holiness by faith, praying, singing, serving, and seeking justice, it comes in the night after nights and day after days of embodying the hope, light, and joy that indwells in us through Christ. For unto us still... The saints and the sinners, two millennium later, comes the true light, the light of lights eternal, the bright and morning star, until we all will know when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendor fling. And so we, along with the ever-gathering world, send back the song which now and then the angels sing.
during this Christmas tide, I, I, I want you to remember that God comes to us. God dwells with us. God dwells within us. God comes as a child to be in loving relationship with us. God redeems us. God brings us to eternal life. And God points us to the kingdom. We remember God, especially during this Christmas tide, when we celebrate the birth of your only son, Jesus. And so, in the name of the one who, for unto us, came, redeemed and redeems, and dwells forevermore. Amen. We come now to that time in worship when we pray over the prayers of the people. Today, we especially lift these concerns before God for the safety and good health of all people, and especially teachers, students, health care, health care workers, and others whose jobs make it so that they cannot avoid being exposed to COVID. We lift up Doris Lyon today. We lift up Greg and Cheryl. We lift up the lonely, and we lift up Darian, Tracy, Pam, Karen, Dondi, and Angie. 
In addition to all of those, we lift up the names that have not been spoken out loud that we do know, and we know that you, God, know them. Further, we lift up the names that have not been spoken, that will not be spoken by anyone, but you, God, know as well. We also enter into the joy of technology that connects people during the holidays, for the birthdays, I've Pat Noel and Nathaniel this week, among the others, for anniversaries, which I've forgotten to look up, but I know there are some for this week. And there was a recent wedding to celebrate. We lift up all of these joys, but we also lift up the joys that have been spoken that we don't know about this morning, but you, God, know. And we lift up the joys that will not be spoken, that you, God, also know. And so we trust that in our prayer, Lord, you know both the spoken and the unspoken prayers of all of our hearts. And we also join together praying together, Lord. So let us pray. Love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have embraced each other. Faithfulness has sprung forth from the earth and we shout hallelujah you have faithfully come to us from heaven. You have kept your promise. The Savior has been born and a new world has been begun. In this season, God, we rejoice for the salvation you have brought, the Redeemer that has come to the earth, and we rejoice in the glimpse of the Messiah as a child. We shout aloud, hallelujah. We we are so thankful for your faithfulness, which has come down from heaven. You have kept your promise. The Savior has been born. A new world has been begun. We believe once more that perfect love casts out fear. We believe that generosity can transform scarcity into abundance. We believe that righteousness overcomes oppression with justice. And we shout, hallelujah. Your faithfulness has come down from heaven. God, you have kept your promise. The Savior has been born and the new world has begun. We are graced by Christ's presence and filled by Christ's love. We, may we become bearers of God's light and go out to transform our world. And we shout hallelujah. God, your faithfulness has come to us from heaven. You have kept your promise. The Savior has been born and a new world has begun. Praise to the incarnate one, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Praise to the three in one. Praise to the one in three. Praise to God on high who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now I'd like to take a moment to thank you, the church, for your generosity of gifts and presence and witness and all of the things that you do for the church. When we reflect on our offerings that we give each Sunday, we often will bring up a person or a circumstance or a mission that we are going to sow into. But today, as we reflect on this year, I want to reflect on the generosity of this church that has sowed into unknown circumstances during unprecedented, well, maybe not totally unprecedented, but unforeseen by us times that has kept the church strong and faithful and moving forward, even as we try to figure out what the next thing will be in the midst of a pandemic. Your faithfulness your generosity, your offerings, your beauty are what I want to call us to be aware of today and to let you know the thankfulness that comes from all of us for those gifts. And so let us pray over offering. Loving God, faithful and gracious forever, you love us more than we love ourselves. 
You believe in us more than we believe in ourselves. You call us to walk with Christ, the newborn child, and be more than we ever thought possible. Take our gifts, receive our thanks, accept our praise through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, hear this blessing and benediction. Almighty God, whose great love and compassion came into our world in the person of your incarnate Son, Jesus Christ, plant in every heart your concern and care for all humankind. May the light of Christ ignite your hearts and shine brightly from your lives, proclaiming Christ's salvation to all the earth. May the light of God shine on us. May the love of God shine in us. And may the life of the Spirit shine through us this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>